This is a lesson for beginning musicians who want to know all about musical questions and answers. But before we jump into the music, I want to think about spoken questions and answers. Listen to these two sentences. What would you like to eat? I'd like a taco, please. Now that's a conversation that happens in my household all the time, but it changes substantially if I say it slightly differently. How about this? What would you like to eat? I'd like a taco, please. Do you hear that difference? I went from saying, I'd like a taco, please, to I'd like a taco, please. One of these is a question and one of them is an answer. Which is which? Well, the one that I said first, I'd like a taco, please, sounds definitive. You know that I want a taco. But when I raise my voice at the end and I say, I'd like a taco, please, you start to wonder, do I really want a taco or not? And that's because I actually asked a question when I decided to raise my voice at the end. When we speak to each other and we ask questions, we always raise our voice up at the end. That means that we go like this and our voice goes slightly higher than it is for the rest of the sentence. It's not something we usually have to think about. It's something we just do. It's a part of our spoken conversations. And when we answer questions as we're speaking, we do the opposite. Our voice lowers or it does not go up at the end when we're providing an answer. Again, this is something that we just do. We usually don't even really have to think about what we are doing. So you already instinctively know that to ask a question, you should raise the pitch at the end of the sentence. And to answer a question, you should not. Good news! In music, questions and answers work the exact same way. It's time to talk about the musical question. What is a musical question? Well, a musical question is a phrase in music that ends on a note that is higher than the home note. The home note is the bass note of a scale that a piece is written in, and a phrase is a short section of music often four measures long. With a musical question, that note is raised up at the end, and as a result, the last note sounds unresolved, and the listener expects something more to happen. Let's look at and listen to an example. This example is based on a home note of C. It's coming up to this note, G, which is decidedly higher than C. And it sounds like something more is coming. Here's another example of a musical question. Once again, our home note is C, and we're going to end all the way up on G. I want you to listen to how it sounds like something more is going to happen. It doesn't sound like it could be the ending. Let's take a look at how musical answers work. A musical answer is a musical phrase that does end on the home note. And when it does that, the last note sounds like it's resolved. And people that are listening to the music have a sense that either the section or the whole piece of music has ended. Now let's look at and listen to a couple of musical answers. hear how that comes down to the home note of C and sounds like it's resolved. We have a sense that it's over. And here's another example of a musical answer.
The musical piece might not end after the musical answer. It might continue into a new section, but we get the feeling that it could end and it would be settled. Let's take our discussion a step further and talk about the difference between parallel and contrasting musical answers. A parallel musical answer begins with the same notes that the question began with. And when it doesn't begin with the same notes, we call it a contrasting answer. This is best for me to show you with an example. Listen to this question and answer back to back. Question. Answer. Now, how do we determine if this is a parallel or a contrasting answer to the question? Well, we have to look at the first notes. Let's take a look at them. In the question on the top line, I see the notes C, E, G, E. In the answer on the bottom line, I see the notes C, E, G, E. They look the same and they sound the same. Because they are the same beginning notes, there's no doubt that this is a parallel answer. Because when you have a parallel answer, that means that the first notes of the musical phrase for the answer are the same as the first notes of the question. Let's take a look at one more. Watch and listen to this question and answer group. Here's the question. And the answer. What do we check to determine if the answer is either parallel or contrasting? We check those beginning notes. On the top in the question, I see C, 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 D, E. And on the bottom in the answer, I see E, 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 D, C. These do not look the same, and they do not sound the same. They are different. And now that we know that they are different, we can answer our question, is this a parallel or a contrasting answer? Did you say contrasting? If you did, you're right. Because when the first notes of an answer are different than the first notes of its question, then it is a contrasting answer. That's it. That's all the concepts in questions and answers for a beginning musician. So let's review what we spoke about. A musical question is a phrase that ends on a note higher than the home note. Remember, a phrase is a section of music, usually about four measures long. A musical answer is an answering musical phrase that ends on the home note. There's two types of musical answers. A parallel answer begins with the same notes that the question began with, and a contrasting one begins differently. Thank you for watching.